Jack's notebook. He's an innovation consultant as well, an inspirational actor, and an improvisational actor. He does all those things. And I think he's touched many lives in the world of creativity and innovation. At least he touched mine hugely. So uh, welcome, and Greg is going to be talking about creativity fundamentals. And here he is. Over to you, Greg. There, oh, there it is. Test. Okay. I'm not used to always having one in my hand, but we'll work with that today. <clears throat> Good morning. A show of hands. Who has attended a creativity conference of some sort before? Who has not? Okay, so half are newbies. Of the new people, I'm addressing you, um, is it just curiosity? Is it the first time you've ever been exposed to this at all? Or have you read books about it? Or So some exposure, raise your hands. No exposure. Okay, okay. That gives me a sense. All right. Um, normally when I speak to uh, an innovation or a creativity conference, I usually talk about creative process. I'm something of an expert at creative process. My book, Jack's Notebook, is a book about creative process. It's a novel that explains how creative problem solving works. Today, however, I want to talk about more basic aspects of creativity. And I'm going to begin with a story. Um, stories about me uh, and about my life. and. I'm here in front of you today, the fact that I'm speaking to you as a creativity expert is something of a miracle. The, why I say that is, is because I grew up in a large uh, family, Catholic family, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I was the second of seven children, poor family. Uh, we were not very well off. Um, my father and uh, it's, it's difficult for me to talk about my father, but I'm going to talk about my father. My father gave me a huge gift. My father denied me access to creative arts, um, music, um, anything having to do with the, what we might think of as, as creative things as a child. My father was a professional athlete, and he believed that men shouldn't be involved in the arts and create creative things, but should be involved in sports. And so I grew up playing tennis and swimming three or four hours a day and running and doing all those things. And so my father did give me a gift. He gave me the gift of health. So God bless my dad for that. But he also gave me something else, which was anger. Because not only was my father, did he deny me those, those artistic, classically thought of creative things, but he was abusive. My father was an alcoholic, and uh, my father thought nothing, you know, if he w didn't, if your hair was parted the wrong way in the morning, he, he would have thought nothing of giving you a slap across the face. And that happened to me thousands of times. Now I have to say, it's difficult for me to talk to you about this, but it's my story, and it is a gift, because I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for that, because as I grew up, I determined that I wasn't going to be like my father. And creativity became more and more attractive to me in all things creative. And so when I got into college and when I got away from home, what did I start doing? I started making films. I started doing photography. I started uh, getting involved uh, in drugs. <laughs> because at the time, I believed in those myths that to be creative, you had to be out, outwardly creative, and, art, you know, and, and to me, you know, creativity meant you know, jazz musicians and you know, marijuana and you know, lots of drinking and crazy behavior. And that creative thinking was a gift from God. So I got into the television industry. It was my first job out of, out of school. And got a, 
by another miracle, got a job in production, which is very difficult. And every day I went into work and I had to come up with something creative. And some days it came to me and I thought I was a genius. And on other days, ideas didn't come to me and I was driven into the depths of despair. And my life became a, a cycle of creative highs and absence of creative lows and creative highs and creative lows and drinking and drugs and dysfunctional behavior due to the fact I never dealt with the fact of my abusive father and that was my life for many years. I got out of the television industry mostly because I couldn't stand it anymore. So I, I went into business, which I thought of as uncreative, which is ridiculous because everything's creative. Every job can be creative. It's, it's what you make of it. So I'm starting you with that story today about me because I want to talk about fundamentals and I want to talk about the basics of creativity. The very, very, very basics of creativity. Creativity comes from some place very deep inside us. It comes from our, our other brain, which is our heart. And I believe it comes from something that religious people would call the soul. Now, of course, this isn't terribly scientific, is it? And believe me, I can talk to you about the science of creativity. I can talk to you about the things that you can measure. And, but I'm not going to do that today. Today, I want to talk about these things because I think that at innovation conferences in particular, they, they don't want to hear about this part of it. But if you ignore this part of it, you're missing something. So I'll tell you another little story. This one's maybe a little more lighthearted. Um, you see that tool? Do you know, does anyone recognize what that is? What is it? It's like a roto-rooter, yes, or, or sometimes they call it a snake. And it's an electric device. It's a, a long steel cable with a, a twisting, cutting thing at the end of it that you stuff down into pipes when the pipes are clogged. Well, one day, my pipe in my backyard in my driveway clogged up, and there was like, you know, a foot of water in my driveway. So, you know, I could have called the plumber paid some money and had it done professionally, but I wanted to do it myself. So I rented an expensive piece of machinery, this thing here, and you know, put on the hip boots and uh, started, turned it on and started stuffing this cable into the pipe. Now, the thing that is hard to explain in a story is, is how sort of dynamic that thing is. That's, it's almost like it's alive because it's twisting and turning inside. Okay, so I'm pushing it down there into that thing, right? Into that pipe. I'm thinking I'm smart. I'm saving all this money, you know. And my ex-wife looks out the window and says, hey, I hope you're being careful. So I look up and the snake comes up, hits me in the forehead. You know, just about knocks me out. And uh, I was lucky, honestly, I was lucky I didn't lose an eye, or, or worse, in the process. So I said, yeah, I'm being careful. And I started, you know, I finally got the thing done, but the, the point is, simple point to the story, advanced tools and techniques, advanced processes can be dangerous if they're not used properly. And if they ignore other fundamentals, like safety. All right, so in innovation, in creativity, you have to start at the bottom and work up. That's the point of the story. Now, let's see here. <clears throat> I'm gonna step down here so I can see this better. Um, if I were talking to a strictly business crowd today, I would probably be talking about creative process. And I think of those, a, a creative process is working up here. Because business people want results, of course we all want results, and to get results you need ideas. And what tends to occur in the business community, 
and people who want to ignore the fundamentals of, of creativity is they tend to work at the head level. Whoops, wrong one. They tend to work at the head level and they ignore these fundamental behaviors. behaviors. What I believe is that in order to get the ideas and the results, your creative potential has to be expressed through your imagination and your self-expression. And how this happens on a day-to-day -day basis are fundamental creative behaviors. I believe there are a lot of people who talk about creativity but don't do creativity. How does one actually act like a creative person every day? How does one manifest creativity in their life every day? It comes about through simpler behaviors than executing complex problem-solving processes like CPS or like trees or like um, uh, other synectics or, or others. So, so today is all about, as I said, these fundamentals. Organizations spend a lot of money doing innovation. And that's okay. I mean, I, that's how I pay my mortgage. <laughs> they hire you to institute programs. This is great. And it's rare that an innovation program actually impacts the behavior of the workers in an organization on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, by the way, checkpoint, am I going too fast or too slow? Not bad? Okay, okay, good. Uh, just because I know that when there's a translation, sometimes the speed can... And by the way, if I get stuck in an Americanisms, if I start talking about baseball, I just kind of go like this or something, all right? So, all right. So, you can do creative, you can do creative, and how organizations do creative is they hire people like me to come in and do a two-day uh, intensive innovation session or an intensive training session, and then they go back to the regular behaviors every, the next day, and then they forget all about what I told them most of the time. Um, also, the two-day intensives aren't all that effective, uh, as much as I'm a wonderful trainer and inspiring speaker. They're not all that effective because they can only be effective if things happen on a day-to-day -day basis. So, <clears throat> again, this is what I'm after today. So, I've come up with something new. This is brand new. I've never presented this before. Uh, so, uh, it's, we're, I'm prototyping it here at Crea, Crea Universite. And, by the way, uh, I love your feedback on this. So, if you have any ideas for me on how to improve what, what's just about to happen, Please, I'm all ears, okay? Uh, by the way, also, uh, I can make all these slides available to you. Just give me your business card after the presentation. Um, okay. So, uh, everyone get out a pen and have a, a piece of paper ready. Also, it would it'd be a good idea for later in the presentation, if you're sitting next to someone who speaks the same language as you. All right, so if you're not next to someone now who speaks the same language as you, make that happen sometime in the next five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. All right, you ready? Everybody got a pen ready and a pencil or piece of paper out? There's 17 questions in the following assessment. Each question you will self-score on a one to five scale. Five being you do this thing. One being you don't do it so much. Advice, be kind to yourself. Score yourself higher than maybe you think you deserve. Don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, Tim Dunn and I did this yesterday and his score was lower than I thought it should be. So I maybe don't have this calibrated exactly right. So be kind, all right? Ready? Oh, the scale, again, is um, f 
Five is you, you do the behavior, you conform, you answer yes to the question, basically. Uh, one is you don't do it well or you don't do this thing. You, you'll see as we go into this. It'll become self-evident, I think. Okay, here we go. First question. Do you carry a notebook and a pen or pencil with you all the time? Five, if you take one, the extreme, right, that you always have one with you. Like, you know, you take one on a jog or a bicycle ride. Four, if you have one in your purse and you have it with you 80% of the time. I always have a notebook on me, even when I'm jogging. The only time I don't have this with me is when I'm swimming. Even then, it's right next to the pool. And I'll, I'll speak a little bit about, like, the why. Pardon? Something happened? Oh, that's all right. I'm always getting things screwed up, so it's, it's all going to be all right. It'll co probably come out if I do all this. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so that's the first question. Second question, here we go. Do you maintain active lists of ideas for your various projects? So, you know, something, you know, you have a list of ideas for the, you know, your problem relationship with your mother-in-law. Uh, or you, <laughs> you have a, a, an active list of ideas going for, you know, that book that you're going to write. Or you have a list of ideas going for that business challenge that you have, or whatever it is for you. But to, to, to get to why I asked this question, you should always be ideating. Ideation is not a once a year or once a, even a once a week thing. It should be an everyday, all the time sort of thing. All right, next question. Do you regularly review your ideas, make some decisions, and take actions? So this sort of presumes you keep a list of ideas. There's the business card. This is a good one, too. Thank you, sir. It's not even mine. All right, so why this? If you, <laughs> if you keep lists of ideas, that's great. I mean, if you're a great ideator, and many of us are, and you've got lots of ideas, but you never do anything with them, you're not very creatively effective, are you? So, you not only have to keep lists of ideas and keep ideating all the time, you have to actually, like, do something and take action. The way this happens best is if you have, like, a regular time of week or regular time uh, or regular sort of signal that gives you the inspiration to, yes, now is the time when I look through the ideas that I did the last few days or the last week, and I'm going to look through those, I'm going to circle the ones that have energy, and move into action on those. If you don't have a regular time for doing that, start thinking about how you can institutionalize that in your life, how you can put that into your life on a regular basis. Sundays, for me, are a good day for this because you don't have the business phone calls and so forth, and so you can take an hour on Sunday and be reflective. That's just how I do it. Might be different for you. Next question, what do you do simply because it's new or it's fun? So if, give yourself a five. If, you do, if you've done something new or fun in the last week just because it's new or fun, right? And I'm not talking about like accidentally you got to do something new or fun because, you know, like yesterday, Tim, Tim Dunn, uh, who I'm staying with here, took me to the Pompidou Center and we saw this really cool new art exhibit. That doesn't count because it was his idea to do that. You have to have the idea to do something new or fun and then do it. So five if you do that kind of thing on a weekly basis. If it's a monthly basis, three, right? And if you just don't do this or if you do it once a year, it's a one. All right, moving along. Next question. What do you do to instigate or initiate fun? 
So are you the kind of person, if, if you walk into your work environment and things are really dull, you find a way to make it fun? Is that you? If you're not, you should start doing that, by the way. <laughs> because in the words of John F. Kennedy, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. All right? Fun is essential to creative thinking. Yes, you can have creative ideas without fun, but with fun, you literally put your brain into a different way of thinking. So the idea of in interpret fun loosely, right? Fun doesn't necessarily mean jokes or comedy acting or, or acting completely silly or goofy. Fun can be simply lighthearted. Fun can be playing with a business problem and just kicking ideas around and just for the pure hell of it suggesting something that couldn't possibly work because it stretches how your perspective because it might lead to an idea that actually works for the challenge. So score yourself on the fun question. Six, next question. Do you travel to new places? So, score yourself a five if you have a trip to some place you've never been before, book now. If you're just thinking about going to see the pyramids, that's only a three or a two. So, why do I ask this question? Because travel is one of, travel to new places is one of the best possible ways to get a fresh perspective on something. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people, uh, this is a brand new survey, so I'm saying a lot of people already, but uh, I've had at least one comment, let's put it that way, that said, but what if you're not wealthy and you can't travel? Okay, how about the girl that I saw on the subway in Paris this morning, obviously an American, who has got like the backpack that weighs 80 pounds and a bicycle. Now I know she didn't have any money at all, but here she is in Europe doing Europe on a bike, okay? If you really want to go someplace new, you can. If you're at this conference sitting in that chair right now, you have some resources. So, if, anyway, I, th I still think it's a valid question. <laughs> but I'm willing to listen to other suggestions. All right, next question. Do you have a regular vehicle for self-expression? So if you remember that slide I had early on where the self-expression is underneath the, the ideas and the results, self-expression is, is some way to express who you are and what you are as a creative being. It could be a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be art, by the way. Art is one cool, interesting way to do it, but it doesn't have to be art. It could be gardening, it could be cooking, right? But do you have that regular vehicle for self-expression? Because guess what? If you don't, how are you practicing creativity? Tell me how, if, you're, if you don't have some regular way of doing it. So, five, if you have something. Play guitar once a week, draw once a week, sing every day in the shower, it counts, okay? All right? And there you go, so there's that question. Next question. Do you immerse yourself in nature? Now, if you're an urban dweller, there's still ways to get outside and be in a park or at least get, get outside into the fresh air or whatever kind of air we have. Do you, though, ever, or do you on a regular basis, immerse yourself in nature? You might ask me, why is this question in an assessment about creativity? Answer, I believe that if you don't have roots in the ground in some respect, some way of keeping in touch with the earth we live on, then you're not taking care of an essential creative fundamental. My belief. You don't have to believe it. 
but it's my questionnaire. Staying in there, damn it. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right. Do you know what you really care about? It's interesting how this question is challenging for some people. Well, at least one person that I showed this to. Now, high score yourself if you know what you really care about and it's connected to what you do every day. So you may know what you care about, but you don't like do much about it. Like what you really care about is, um, is short story fiction, but you never write short stories. Low score. You may really care about poor people and the environment, but if you don't re do recycling, low score, right? So do you manifest this? Do you manifest what you care about? Why do I ask this question? Because creativity comes from some motivation. Great creativity comes because you do care about something. It's hard to have great ideas about something you just don't really give a damn about. But it's easy, relatively easy, to have good ideas for things you do care about. So if you care about something and you're doing it every day, then you're probably a, a more creative person than a person who's doing something they don't care about every day. My feelings about it. What do you think? What do I think? What do you think? What do I think about that the question, or yes. what do I care about? What do you care about? I care about largely working with people with disabilities and working for social justice. What do you do about it? I work with people with disabilities as co-researchers. She gets a five, and can we give her a hand for that too? <laughs> All right, next question. I don't know why I did that, I just, I went with it. Okay, when was the last time you tried to do something that you believe is impossible or extremely difficult? Or, very, or just very risky? Like you could maybe succeed, but high chance of failure. So if you try to do something very difficult on a weekly basis, you get a five. I think I should get a five on this one because I try to play an F chord on a guitar and I cannot play an F chord. And it's driving me out of my mind. But I keep trying. And you know what? The other day I kind of got it. Like just barely for like two seconds. And like my, my hand went into an arthritic cramp afterwards, but it was close. All right, next. When was the last time you did something outside of your comfort zone. You know what I mean by that comfort zone? I saw some question marks there. Uh, it, it's something that, you know, you have those things that are easy for you to do and that are natural for you, but like maybe you're an introvert and to get up and do a speech like this would be like outside your comfort zone, right? But you do it anyway. That's a five. Or you're an extrovert and you go to a transcendental meditation class. That's a five for an extrovert. Be a five for me anyway. Okay, so next question. Do you rely on conversational scripts? Do you know what I mean by that? Okay, so when I used to work at a company, which I haven't for many years, but when I used to work at a company, people always said the same thing when you were in front of the coffee pitcher. It was, how about those Reds? Reds are a baseball team. How about those Reds? Oh man, they, they suck. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, yeah, okay. So just same pattern every day. Or you go to the, the dry cleaner, and the dry cleaner is someone you see once a week, and you always say the same thing. Hi, how's it going? Fine, Mr. Fairley. No, that's great. Can I have my clothes? No, you know, just, mm, 
uh, uh. So those are conversational scripts. We have them, a lot of them, right? And sometimes they actually are pretty helpful. But guess what? If you rely on a script, then you're not really with the person you're with. You're not really experiencing them in a, a real way. And you're not taking advantage of the fact that every time you put yourself in front of someone, there's a creative opportunity. All right, a, a, a moment in time when you can practice creativity just by being in the moment and, and recognizing what's between you in that space, between you and another person. That's a creative opportunity. Every day we have them, and every day, my belief, we ignore people. You get extra points on this question if you really are with people that almost everyone else takes for granted. And you know, the person that gets you coffee, the person who does your laundry, the person who does those services for you that, that sort of make life bearable. Anyway, moving along. Do you have like really strong opinions on things? Now, the score here isn't if you have strong opinions. The score here is if you give other opinions a chance in your head. So if you're one of these people that has dogmatic beliefs about things, whether it be politics or religion or how to do some particular process in business or how to do some particular thing, if you have a, really strong beliefs about those things, then what's happening for you if you don't at least every once in a while question that is you're missing opportunities to improve. And you're missing opportunities for new creative connections. The more doors you have closed, the less ideas can come in those doors for you. Next question. Do you have a method or a system or some way, some reminder to remind yourself to practice creative behaviors? Because I've been studying creativity for almost 25 years and I still have to remind myself of basic things like deferring judgment. I still have to remind myself every day that quantity of ideas matters. I still have to remind myself to instigate fun and to make boring things fun. I still have to remind myself of all those things. And so how do you remind yourself of those things? Uh, I don't do it anymore because someone said it looked effeminate. <clears throat> but I used to wear a ring with a little black stone on it. And every time I looked at that black stone, it was a reminder, it was a, like a flag. Oh yeah, think about where you are right now and are you behaving as a creative being? So if you don't have something like that, think about what you could do to have something like that. What could be your signal? What could be your reminder? Think about it. Later on to today, we'll, uh, we'll find a way to integrate that. Okay. Do you have a process for handling complex challenges? Now this sort of goes off the rails a little bit in terms of it being a fundamental behavior because it actually borders on an advanced behavior. If you don't have a process that you can use, let's imagine if you will, you're driving to work or you're on the subway to work and you know as soon as you get to your desk there's something you're going to have to deal with and you need some ideas for it. This is, you know, something that happens for all of us almost every day, right? How do you process in the subway or in the car? How do you think in that time frame that you have, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it is? Do you think, okay, I need some ideas. I need some ideas. Give me one now. And this is how I used to do it, by the way. I used to beat my head against the steering wheel to see if an idea would like pop out because just pure physical force. Didn't work, by the way. That's what happened to my hair. 
<clears throat> so you need some sort of a process. It could be as simple as, okay, what do I explore the problem? What do I know about it? What, what do I need to know about it? How can I quickly get some more information about it? How can I broaden my perspective about it? Okay, explore, explore, explore. Step two, what ideas do I have? How can I have a few more in the time frame that I have? And then step three, choose one and plan some action. So it can be as simple as one, two, three. Explore, ideate, decide, and get into action. Now, if you want a better process than that, slightly more sophisticated, you might consider reading a book called Jack's Notebook, which teaches creative process in an organic way. So we go on. All right, next question. Do you make regular active efforts to improve your ideas? So, okay, you have some ideas, but then do you look at the idea and say, gee, how can I plus that up? How can I really make it exciting? So, for instance, I have ideas all the time on how I should diet. But those ideas aren't terribly exciting to me, so I don't really do them. And that's why I look the way I do now. If I would take more time and think about my deeper motivations, like being attractive to women and things like that, I might be more interested in dieting. So you have to take the time to improve your ideas. So score yourself a five if you take that time and take your ideas and try to plus them up. A lot of people who are great at doing ideas are really bad at selling them. They think, oh, I've got this great idea, I'm going to go into the boss and tell him about my idea and everybody's going to be happy. And you go in and you tell your boss and he goes, we don't need that idea. We don't want that idea. And gosh, if you had maybe taken a little time to put yourself in that boss's perspective and like try to like figure out how the idea like actually matches to his goals and the company's goals and sort of match the two, then maybe the idea would have had a better chance for acceptance. Hello, Isabel. How you doing? All right. She knows all this already anyway. All right, last question. Do you boldly take action on your best ideas? So basically, this is a question about like, hey, do you do stuff? Uh, as I said, I go to a lot of creativity conferences and innovation conferences, and it's really interesting to me how many people who are actually professional creatives, like, have been working for the last 10 years on a book and didn't, like, get it out. I'm not pointing any fingers. But the point is, is doing things, getting into action on things. Do you do that? So five if you do. You take some in action once a week. Okay, that's the end of the questionnaire. Now, score it up. So total up your, your number. I'm going to take my jacket off while you do that. Because it's getting warm in here. Way ahead of you, Chief. <clears throat> okay, let's look at what I think the results mean. All right, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. If you scored above 72, I believe you are living your life as a creative being. And to me, this means you're not only aware of creative behavior, you're doing it all the time. You're taking action on things, you're making an effort to be rigorous about ideas and, and have lots of them, and so you're basically at the top of your game. 
I would imagine that 6% of the population, just guessing, would be at this level. I'm, I don't think I'm at that level. I think I'm at the next level down, which is creatively living. So this means you're highly aware of what you should be doing, and sometimes you're doing it, but you're maybe just a little bit tentative about being a really into it, like really full bore. And if that's you, then it's not hard to go from the, the, that, this level to the next one up. And that should be your goal. Uh, the third level is creatively aware. And hey, this isn't really bad. This is not bad at all, actually. Um, and basically, this means you, you have an awareness of creative behavior. You do some of it, but there's a lot you're not doing. And again, the opportunities for increased effectiveness are huge for you by taking more action, by being more aware and instituting behaviors into your life every day. If you're down here in the 30 or less, you're either inhibited in terms of your self-expression, something's holding you back, something's blocking you, and that's okay, because guess what? Your challenge is figure out what that block is and remove it so that you can move up into those other categories. So if you're at a lower level on this score, it doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean you're wrong. What it means is you have an opportunity to be a more effective creative person by putting behaviors into your life. Okay, what are those behaviors? So you, the questions have been an indicative of some of those. But let's talk about some of those behaviors, some of those others. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Da, 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 da. So this backing out of the, of the survey, it's designed to measure how you manage ideas. So that was what all the questions were about, about notebooks and actively managing lists and so forth. Um, new stimulus. You're going to be more creative day to day if you have more to work with in your head. Most creativity is, is combinations of two existing things or two existing factors to create something new and different. So if you have more stimulus, you're more likely to come up with new ideas. So the highly creative, effective creative person is seeking new stimulus all the time. Um, interesting article recently I read in, I think it was Wired magazine, about the scientists that have gotten together to sort of invent new things and like do breakthrough discoveries. And that's their whole purpose. They're these successful scientists already, and the way they managed their group was they got different sort of scientists from different kinds of sciences, and then they like regularly invite like wacko people like Bill Gates or, or Steve Jobs or, or, or some crazy artist or a, a famous chef in, and they do ideation sessions. And they've already come up with some breakthrough things. Um, and, and for instance, uh, they, there's a, there was a belief that finding certain kinds of dinosaur fossils was a very rare thing. And they questioned the assumption. They said, why is it so rare? Why does it have to be so rare? I just don't think we're looking in the right places. And they, they sort of rigorously looked at what had been looked at before, and they started looking in the places where they suspected there would be more fossils, and they used new technology to do it. And guess what? They found more fossils than anybody's ever found before. And that was what the common wisdom was, no, that isn't going to happen. We're not going to find that many in that short period of time. It's impossible. Well, it's all about new stimulus. It, and why is it, for instance, that a lot of incredibly inventive things happen by people who aren't even in that industry. You know, the, the civil engineer goes into healthcare and makes a breakthrough like right away. Or the healthcare person goes into a legal field and he makes a breakthrough because they have a fresh perspective. They're bringing new stimulus to bear on old challenges. So, bottom line, seek new stimulus. Fun and passion, I talked about motivation. If you're not motivated to do something, you're not going to do a lot of work on it. Whether you're in the moment or not has to do with access to your own spontaneous thought. I believe that very few of us have very good access to our spontaneous thought. Everybody wants to try to think through a problem, 
as opposed to allowing your subconscious to pop ideas into your consciousness. Your subconscious is constantly trying to give you ideas. Most of the time, you're shutting your door to it. If you can open that door, you're going to get more effective ideas, and that's what being in the moment's all about. Willingness to take risks. We learn from failure. Failure can be a very positive thing. So if you fail often, but you learn each time you fail, you're going to do great things. Finally, and this is the most basic one of all, and I think every speaker that's going to speak at this conference will at least touch upon this in some way, but openness or deferral of judgment is the most fundamental thing of all. It's also, incidentally, the hardest one to do. Personal belief, I believe that almost all of us can't go five minutes without making about 15 judgments about everything and everybody around us. Don't even want to talk about how difficult it is for me not to judge people sometimes. But you have to try, and you have to constantly be looking at that black ring on your finger to say, okay, I'm going to be open-minded with this person that absolutely turned me off the first moment I saw them, you know. And what do they have to offer me? What do they have, what gifts can they bring me? What, what can I use in this relationship to further enhance my life and our interaction? Openness. So all in daily life, not just in theory. So moving along, what do these people all have in common? Any guesses? Creativity, definitely, yeah. What behavior, I guess, I'm looking for the behavior. You have a guess, Ulrich? They're creative, they're all, and they're all men almost. But I do have one woman in there, don't I? Okay. Sonia, what do you think? I think they're inventive. Inventive, okay. What behavior do you think they might all exhibit on a day-to-day -day basis, or did when they were alive, some of them? Fun? Risk-taking? Okay. Those Note-taking, that's the one I was looking for. Thank you. Yes, sir? Meticulous. Meticulous. I think that's true of some of them, yes. You have an idea? Just get something new of the old ideas. Fair enough. Okay. Changes. They love changes. They love changes. I think they do. I think you're right. Although some of these people are actually fairly conservative in terms of their day stuff. Professionally. Fair enough. Don't even know what it means, but I'm sure it's true. <laughs> All right. What they have in common is. This is the big media animation part of my show today. Let's do sound effects. Once upon a time, there was a country. It was America. It was a country. It's no longer a country. It's Disneyland. And M equals M, she's God. How many wives did I have? And why did I commit suicide? Moving along. And that's my, <clears throat> I showed this, this particular a bit, this, this slideshow in, uh, at another conference. And of course, they said there's no women in, in the list. And, the, the best example of, of the principle of using notebooks is probably Julia Cameron, because Julia Cameron is the one that convinced everybody else to use network, notebooks with her book, The Artist's Way. By the way, if you're a newbie to creativity, The Artist's Way, wonderful book about instituting creativity into your life on a day-to-day -day basis. So they all use notebooks. All those people had notebooks, notebooks, notebooks. They had them all the time. Why is a notebook, why am I so hung up on this notebook thing? All right, Every, they've measured this. People on average have about 65,000 thoughts a day. Some people have more, some people have a few less, but 65,000 thoughts run through your head every day. A lot of those thoughts and observations are, in fact, ideas 
that you can use to be more effective in something you're doing. Well, how many of those, let's imagine it's 6,000, do you write down? Usually, we don't write any of them down. And what happens when you don't write things down? Unless you're like some genius with memory guy. If you smoked as much marijuana as I did back in the day, you have no long-term memory, so you need to write things down. So, you will double your effectiveness as a creative person just by having a notebook and writing things down. If there's one sing single simple tip, I mean, 50% boost, who wouldn't want that? Get a notebook. And if you review those ideas once a week or try to amp them up, you're going to go from 50% to 100% more effective. So, all right. Another thing, another aspect, a missed opportunity for creativity is every conversation that we have every single day. So, what I'm going to ask you to do now, uh, okay, are you with somebody who speaks your language? Now's the time where you have to be with that person. Because what I'm going to ask you to do is talk to someone next to you or nearby for just two minutes about your family. So starting now, go ahead and do that. Talk. Talk, talk. Thank you. Or give, the, give the other person a turn now. So switch over. Wonderful, Greg. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. Really great. They're into it and everything. You seem engaged. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah, having fun. Very good. So, uh, in the end, we're ending at 11. Uh, I have a gift for you, a thank you, etc. Oh, it's over at 11. Yeah. So I better hurry up. Good for you. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so winding you know, up. I need to come up and uh, and say what's next. I'll thank you and say what's okay. next. Okay. Okay. So I should stay up there then. Yeah. So just tell me when you're ready for me. Okay. I'll give you the high sign. Oh, you'll know. Okay, stop. May I have your attention, please? Your attention, please. There's a train leaving on track four for River City, Iowa. Station stop, River City. <clears throat> come back, Dorothy, come back. Come back to me, please. Come back, come back, come back, please come back, or I'll start doing Elvis. All right, now, <clears throat> question, question if I might ask. All right, what was new or different, okay, what was new or different about the way that you talked about your family today? I'm going to do a Phil Donahue style. Any comments on what was new or different? Joe? I found myself saying that my daughter was funny. She was, you know, she was a good comedian. And I don't normally say that, but she is really funny. So the fact that your daughter's funny is not in your script normally. True. What do you think got you to say that today? I guess I was just thinking, I was thinking more of what to say about my daughter, and that was the first thing that came to me. 
the first thing that came to you without thinking, yeah. if I can put words in your mouth. Okay, interesting. Any other comments? Thoughts? What was different? Or wasn't it different? Here's somebody over there. Wait a minute. So little time, so little time. Here we are. Um, I, I said for the first time today, introduce myself as an orphan. I've never thought of myself as an orphan, but I don't have either of my parents. And I also introduced my dog as part of the family. <laughs> and he really is. What was the inspiration for those things? <laughs> um, probably because the gentleman behind me that I was speaking to bo still has both his parents. So I was thinking, wow, um, I don't. What does that make me, an orphan? So, okay. And my dog, because he is such an integral part of my family, that uh, after my three kids, my dog, it was a natural follow-up. Why deny it, huh? That's right. Okay, so I'm just going to take those two, th the comments that we've heard, to illustrate some points. Every conversation, I mean, and I would bet you if I had a show of hands, let's just show of hands, who thought that was kind of an interesting conversation? Yeah, if you don't raise your hand, they're going to think, oh, they don't like me very much. Um, every conversation that you have every single day has that potential, okay? And it's great practice in self-expression. It's great opportunities to discover something you didn't really know you knew about your daughter or how you regarded your dog, you know? And so those are discoveries that happen when you're not thinking, when you're expressing from somewhere in here and it's coming out your mouth, right? So, moving along. I have this faucet analogy, and the faucet analogy goes something like this. People t hire me to come in and do two days of ideation or brainstorming. But guess what? They don't go so well. After about the first hour, people run out of ideas. A lot of times, things really fall off after that first hour or so. Two hours sometimes. Depends on the challenge. Why? Because sometimes I'll bring people in like improv actors and stuff and people who are always sort of in the mode of constant self-expression or have the faucet turned on. And they, come up, they can come up with ideas all day long. You know, idea 858, they're still going strong like they, you know, they're still keeping up with new ones. Why is some people so fluid with ideation and some people not so fluid with ideation? They don't practice. They don't turn the faucet on. If you want the faucet to be on, the one day your company does brainstorming, you have to keep it on. It has to be turned on. Otherwise, it'll be rusty and you won't be able to get it on. All right. Moving along, so find ways to turn the faucet on. Notebooks, talking to people every day, these are ways to turn the faucet on. Okay, free association.